Cathcart Motel. Yes, Natalie, let me tell you, in answer to uh, those queries you were getting about a Crossroads video, actually one has been released today by Central Television. It is available in the shops. That's what it looks like. It's got uh, Meg on the front there with uh, her husband. Who was he? Hugh Mortimer. Hugh Mortimer. John Bentley. Right. John yes. Bentley. Uh, and it is available in the shops from today. And you will have immediately recognised the voice and face of, of Jill there. And beside her, Tony Adams, who plays Adam Chance. Some other time. Not yeah. some other time, yeah. <laughs> and we should explain. We're sitting here on the, on the terrace of uh, the, the hotel or the motel. Pretending and, uh, it's summer. Mm. Pretending it's summer. <laughs> a lot, all your exterior shots are, of course, done. Uh, yes, a lot of love scenes have taken place on this, this wall here. And usually when it's quite chilly like Very it. chilly. And then to match up, actually, when it goes out, as you can see, there are no leaves on the trees. A lot of plastic flowers we used to have around. Yes. But it was very difficult to match up. Yeah. And then come the winter scenes, we had lots <laughs> People of leaves People sweeping the, trees. the snow out yes. of the background yeah. shots. Did you disrupt the normal down. business of the hotel here? Because I said we are at the, uh, the Penn Hall Hotel in North Birmingham. Did yeah. uh, you get in the way of, the, of ordinary business here? Did they run coach trips to see oh, yes. crossroads being yes. filmed? It's quite a lot of people got quite incensed yes. about it. They used to get <laughs> very cross when they had their delivery lorries because we kept stopping them coming up yeah. and there'd be a queue of lorries down the drive waiting to deliver because we were always here on Mondays. Yeah. And I think everyone delivers on Mondays. OK. Yeah. I say today we're, we're going to look back on the whole history uh, of the motel, of course, and the great thing about setting a soap in a motel, of course, is that anybody can come to stay. And here are just a few of the more famous fames that have stayed at Crossroads over the years. Okay, here's your coffee. Look, come and sit down a minute. Okay, but uh, only for a little while. So, Amy says it's all happening for you. What, with the motel, you mean? Yeah, it looks like it. All I have to do is sign on the dotted line. So you finally hit the big time. Well, I wouldn't say that. But the old bank balance is looking a bit healthier every minute. Oh, good. <laughs> Jane, that's absolutely amazing. How did you actually manage to get an actor of the calibre of Larry Grayson to take part in Crossroads? That must have been some coup for the programme. Oh, I think we'd Larry just say... <laughs> <laughs> he lives local. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, Eamon. Hi, Larry. Oh, and absolutely. it was your roles, too, wasn't oh, it? Oh, absolutely, yes. And my, and my chauffeur, may I say, mm. in his white uniform and the, with a cap with the LG on. They asked me, you know, if they could borrow my roles, you see. And they wanted me to drive it, you see, Eamon, but of course I can't drive. <laughs> you can't drive? I can't drive at all, no. Just a tandem with Everard. So how did we... <laughs> <laughs> well, OK, how, how did you actually film that? Well, well it was my side that did it because I am... Um, my chauffeur were in the car, you see, and then we changed places quickly, uh, and Nolly knocked me like that, you see, and then we went off, and then my chauffeur changed over quickly and got in and drove away, you see, and everyone said, oh, Larry can drive after all, then, you see, it was all rubbish, I couldn't drive at all, I still can't. Now, the reason you, you were obviously in the programme is because you're a very close friend of, oh, of Noel very, Gordon. Oh, yeah, I knew them all yes. very well, right from the early days, I used to go and have lunch in the, in the canteen there, you know, and I used to go visit Nolly, and uh, we were great friends right from 1972, when she came on a programme I was doing called Saturday Variety, and we became great friends, and her mother too, she was wonderful. I miss her terribly still. Marvellous. Yeah. Wonderful. So professional. And she treated, she treated Jane and Roger just like her own children. She said to me once, you know, Roger... Um, that was Rod Roger Tongue. Roger, Roger Tongue, yeah. Sandy. He's played Sandy and Jill. She, I, they're like my family, the family I never had, you know, Larry. And uh, she, she was, thought the world of them both. And she was very sad when, of course, when Roger died. And she loved Jill. Did you look upon her as, as, a, as a mother figure? Oh! Yes, in a sort of way. Well, she was very much mum to the to the cast. I mean, she sort of presided over us yeah, and defended us and looked after us. And she yeah. was the lovely thing. She when new people used to arrive on Monday morning, uh, they'd come through the door. And she'd leap to her feet and say, "Hello, I'm Noel Gordon. Do come in. This is where." We... And everybody knew she was Nolly, but. They were smashing. Yeah. And we should point out, of course, that uh, Crossroads, of course, is very near Birmingham Airport. As you will gather <laughs> from the overhead traffic. But, uh, Larry, this was yeah. not your first appearance at the hotel. Oh, no, no. no. I, uh, I checked in there once. She asked me to. They said, would you like to come and do something at Crossroads? I said, yes, I will. And um, 
I did, and I paid as myself. I checked in and had this room there, and um, I was very disagreeable and awful. And the next day, um, and first of all, I must tell you a lovely story about uh, the fan letters that she used to get, but well, they all get. But this uh, uh, this man used to write to her and tell her about his ferrets, believe it or not. His ferrets? His ferrets, yes, his ferrets. He, he, he said, uh, I have ferrets, my, mother, my wife hates them, and you're such an understanding person, Meg, and uh, I'd love you to come out sometime to smell they can see my ferrets. I said, oh, darling, how awful. You, you should, I can't bear them. I said, well, I can't, you know. So anyway, she always tell me about these ferrets, you see. So when I was on the programme, we went out on the part where I came in to check out, and, I, and she said, have you had a, a good night? I said, certainly not. The bed was damp. I came out of my chalet. I fell over a bucket. She said, that would be Amy Turtle. And I said, I've had the most awful, awful night. She said, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Grace. I really am. I said, and another thing, Mrs. Richardson. All night long, there was scratching in my room. <laughs> and she looked at me like that. I can see her eyes now. She this said, was not said, scripted. No, of course not. Of course not. <laughs> and I said, have you got ferrets here? <laughs> and her eyes went like And of course, we went out on that. Dull, 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 and she went like that. Oh, and the things she said this about me. An and, then, and all the studio were in fits of laughter because they knew about this thing about the ferrets. And, oh, you know, she said, I'll get you for that, my lad, you know. I, oh, she was lovely. Well, it should be said, of mm. course, that you were not the only famous person to stay at the motel. Oh, indeed not. Oh, yes, no. a lot of our viewers will recognise the people we're going to show you now. See if you can recognise these people.